Hello, my name is Richard Cleary. Uh, welcome to Whisperwood Studios. This is uh, my recording studio. I'm currently working on a project called New World. Uh, this is the latest effort uh, from the Trevor Dick Band. Uh, Trevor Dick is a musician that I've known for quite some time, and this is my third project uh, with Trevor. Uh, I've been doing the engineering, and I'll be doing the mixing for the project as well. This is a project that we started about a year ago. Uh, we did the basic tracks at Noble Street Studios in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And uh, we've been working uh, a lot since then on the various overdub activities and the editing activities. And almost a year later, we're now about ready to finish all of this, uh, all of this hard work. And I'm very excited about where we are with the project. I'm going to share with you just a few things that we do with, uh, with the material as, uh, as we're moving it from the uh, editing stages to the mixing stage. And I thought you might find it interesting to get uh, just a small peek behind the scenes in terms of what, uh, of what goes behind a mix. So we're looking at the project itself. Uh, these are a few of the projects that I'm, I'm working on, and, and here is uh, the, the New World project. Uh, it's actually quite a large project. Uh, it takes about uh, half a terabyte of uh, disk space. So there's a lot of material. We recorded it in high-resolution audio, so 96 kilohertz, 24-bit uh, uh, wave files. Uh, so high-resolution audio. And you can see here that we have uh, uh, organized all of the work into different, uh, different segments. So this first folder is the uh, work that we did initially with the bed tracks. These tracks are, are the ones that we use to do the basic recording work. The basic recording work included uh, tracking drums, piano, bass. Uh, we put uh, a few other instruments down, some violin tracks and some guitar tracks, but primarily we were interested in getting a good set of drum tracks uh, and uh, good piano tracks uh, as well as uh, good bass tracks. So those were our bed tracks that we did in, in May of 2013. And then after that period of time, we did a number of overdubs and track edits. And that took place through the latter part of 2013. And we finished all of the uh, tracking actually just uh, a few weeks ago. So all of the tracking activities uh, and the majority of the editing activities are, are now complete. And so you can see that we've moved from that stage, uh, from the bed tracks to the edit editing activities, to the mixed tracks themselves, which is where we're going to focus a little bit of our time uh, in this video. Uh, you can see here there's another folder for uh, uh, New World Noble Street Stems. We went back to the recording studio in March of this year uh, to do some additional overdubs, and I took stems with me uh, for that work. I have a few files that I use for calibrating my uh, studio environment uh, and some of the templates that I use. This folder contains all of the transfers that uh, took place between the musicians. A number of the musicians on this project uh, did some of the recording work in their, in their own studios and shipped those files to me, and I flew them into this project here. Uh, this is the uh, folder where I store all of the mixes that I'm producing for the team. They, uh, we share those uh, through a cloud-based uh, service. Uh, they can listen to the mixes as I'm, I'm, I'm working on them and provide me feedback. And then obviously during that time, we also produced a number of session dubs. These dubs are, are not mixes, they're just a, a rough sense of, uh, of the songs themselves. So that's, that's the project in terms of how all the files are, are organized. So we're going to go and we're going to work on a song called East. And I've already started to do much of the work to get East organized. But let's take a, a look at this session and, uh, and some of the things that I need to do to get it ready for mixing. We have the session up. And as you can see, it has a, a, a date stamp on it, 2014-03-22 uh, East Edits. So before we do anything further, we're going to save this particular session. And we're actually going to save it to indicate that it's a mixed release candidate. It's the first version of the mixed release candidate. And of course, the name of the song is East. That helps me understand where we are in the mix cycle because it's not unusual to produce two, three, four, five, or more mixed release candidates. And just by way of reference, we're not going to be spending that much time today, uh, but generally a song will take me a day or two days to actually mix. So much of the work that I do to get the song ready for mixing might take an hour or two just to clean the session up for the mix activity. So what types of things do I do to get the, the, the session ready for mixing? 
Well, I'll show you a few things. One of the things that you, you may notice is that the, there are a bunch of markers here uh, that indicate sections of the song. Uh, that allows me to quickly go to uh, different areas uh, of the song. So if I want to go, let's say, to the uh, uh, solo, I can quickly jump to the solo. And if I want to quickly go to the beginning of the song, I can do the same thing uh, there as well, and I can go to the start of the song. So these markers are very useful for me in terms of listening to the, to the song and, and having a sense as to where I might need to do some work. So I always make sure that the songs have markers. I also color code all of the tracks. So all of the tracks that are in common, you can see along the left-hand side of the session, that I've actually color coded uh, all of these tracks so that I can very quickly see visually by color coding them and organizing them, and I also name them in a way that it's uh, it's easy for me to know where these tracks are, uh, and I use a certain naming convention for grouping the tracks. You'll see at the top here uh, that I have a number of tracks with names like V bass, V drums, V keys, V guitars, etc. Uh, and you can actually see here on uh, on the console uh, they show up. Uh, in the same place on the console, uh, it allows me to take all of those tracks, uh, and there are quite a few of them, it allows me to group those tracks uh, into, in this case, uh, a grouping for the bass tracks, grouping for the drum tracks, the keyboard tracks, guitar tracks, violin tracks, and I'm using a number of effects that I can group here as well. So the advantage for me is that if I want to do some more detailed work on the drums, I can, on this console, I can press a key which spills all of the tracks associated with the drums onto its own uh, section here. So now these faders are showing me the uh, inside mic for the kick drum, the outside mic for the kick drum, the top of the snare drum, the bottom of the snare drum, the hi-hat mic, the tom mics, and if I keep going there are a few more tom mics, the ride cymbal, the overhead mics, and the ambient mics close and far. So that's a very convenient way for me to be able to navigate through all of these tracks. Uh, I'll show you on the screen uh, that I could be looking at these tracks uh, uh, using this type of view. And you can see not only are there a lot of faders, uh, but for me to control those faders with a mouse would be very time consuming. And so I use my control surface and the combination of these uh, uh, VCAs. Uh, they're not subgroups, but they're, they're, they're VCAs. And these VCAs, if you like, allow me to use one fader to control many faders. So that ma makes my mixing activities uh, quite a bit uh, more effective. So with, uh, with what we've seen so far then, a large part of getting a session ready for mixing is really making sure the tracks are all cleaned up, that the uh, session itself has been properly marked in terms of the uh, sections of the song, uh, that all of the tracks are appropriately labeled and color-coded, uh, and it allows me to have a better sense as to where the mix is. With that, I think we can uh, give the, um, the song a little bit of a listen, and, uh, and then I'll, 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 I'll show you how I, I typically approach uh, um, a mix situation. So we'll just kind of play the song as, uh, as I have it at this point in time. So that's a little bit of a, a flavor for how the song is sounding, which is actually not sounding too bad even at, uh, at this stage. And we really haven't done too much uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the song at this point. Once all of this has been uh, set and, and, and ready to go, I'll, I'll actually listen to some other music first. I'll have some reference mixes that I'll listen to to get my ears sort of adjusted to 
uh, the types of sounds that I might uh, uh, want to have. I, I find it very powerful to have a reference mix. It, it kind of helps me uh, remember what the low end should sound like uh, and how the frequencies of sound uh, should, uh, should be like. So I always start a mixing session by, by listening to a reference mix. So that's uh, a little bit about how uh, I kind of take a project uh, from the editing stage, get it ready for mixing, and a little bit about how I approach the, uh, the mix itself. Thanks for, uh, for dropping by. Thanks for dropping by the studio. Thanks for taking, uh, taking a look at, with, uh, at, at, uh, at this session with me. And, uh, and I hope that uh, as Trevor gets his project done that you'll drop by uh, his, uh, uh, his website at uh, trevordick.com and uh, take, uh, take advantage of uh, what I'm sure will be a wonderful project once we have it all done in the next, uh, next few months. We'll see you later. Bye.